Hello and welcome back Pouring Nation. Today we're going to talk about pouring on paper. Now right now we're going to uh, pour with this Canson XL. It's a 140 pound paper which means it's a little bit thicker than normal paper. I also have poured on the multimedia paper which is 90 pound. Um, it just tends to buckle a little bit more so I don't use that as often. Um, I just get these Michaels. Um, usually I wait for a buy one get one free sale. Um, and it's much cheaper to practice on these than to uh, buy boards, hardboard, or canvases, or anything like that. So I like to do all my practices, make sure I got my paint mixtures and things right, and then I go to a canvas. So, let's get to it. Now one thing to realize when you're pouring with paper is that, one, you got to make sure it stays flat. With a canvas or something else, it has enough um, weight and surface to it that it will stay flat. With paper, it will not. So you have to have a base. I like using a um, cooling rack. I just put my painting right straight on top of that. Some people like to tape it down so it doesn't move. Uh, I just use my fingers to keep it from moving. Um, you can put it on an old canvas, um, preferably one that's just slightly smaller so that you can grab the paint off the edges and then move it. Otherwise, if it gets onto the canvas like this, then it's just going to kind of run right here and you don't want to deal with that. Uh, some people have cut out a piece of cardboard the exact size of their paper. Put that underneath, you know, two double-sided tape, put it to the cardboard, done everything they need. Uh, they let it dry and then pull it off. There they have it. Um, like I say, I'm just going to use this um, cooling rack and it seems to work for me and I've had some great success with it. So today I'm just using a bunch of uh, leftover paints that I had from a paint pouring party. I got these... Uh, Deco Art Americana Premium for very cheap. They were on clearance at Michael's, uh, so they were like 50 cents uh, an ounce or something like that, which is a great price for um, acrylic paint. And uh, I poured myself two cups. We're going to do two two pours. Um, I had all these in squirt bottles, so I squirt bottles. So I just uh, squirted them in at each end. So you can see they're kind of layered under there. Um, the first one we're going to do is. What I've done is layered white with every color. Um, not specific to doing on paper, but if you if you put a little bit of white between every color, it lightens up the color above it, and it gives it kind of a translucent look, which I have really liked, and so we're going to try that today. And this is a 9 by 12 canvas, or 9 by 12 piece of paper, which means it's 108 square inches. Divide that by 25, and that means I need just over 4 ounces of paint. Um, I will put my paint uh, calculator uh, web page and a link down in the description so you can see that calculation. Depending on which uh, technique you do, sometimes you can divide it by 30. You don't need quite as much paint. Usually for beginners, I say divide it by 25. Make sure you have enough to run off. And then as you get um, good at what you're doing, then you can move to two different amounts. So, and I'm going to do a... I'm just going to pour it out and just go back and forth. Now this is normally how you do like an angel wing pour. This won't produce as much of that effect, but we're just going to pour it on here. Go back and forth. Make sure I get my corners. The same problem with corners on paper as you do with anywhere else. And then with this, I just hold it on the corner. I'm going to move to one side, come back, just to get my paint spread out. But see, right here, the white is kind of lightening up all these colors. That's what layering white and uh, dark colors does. And I actually really like that effect. this pink over here so I'm going to go off the pink side first as you notice the paper went on its own so the pink side first so I can keep and stretch a lot of that pink that's why I did that side first I'm going to come over here to the bronze side 
Notice the paint isn't moving quite as quickly as I'd, exp I'd want it to, so I'm just going to give it a little help here. Alright, so I poured on a piece of paper. Now one thing that you don't really notice here um, is my paper has buckled. It has buckled right here. It has buckled right here. And the reason that happens, and I did that on purpose, is because I put wet paint down on paper. The paper is going to suck up that water at different rates. And what that does is causes the paint to Pull, it, pull in on itself, kind of like when you spray the back of a canvas, it pulls in on itself as it tightens it. In this case, I don't have any frame to keep that in check. And that now pulled my paper to be not flat, and that means it's going to kind of push itself around. Um, so that's one thing you want to worry, you really want to worry about when you're painting with uh, paper, is that you are wetting the surface first. Um, show here. See my paint is kind of buckled right there. You can see how it's buckled. So one thing I do want to point out about this picture is you can see this beautiful lacing right here. See how those colors are kind of transparent? That is because one, the paint I'm using, but also because I put that white layer. It just softened that whole thing up. Um, which is one of the reasons why I like doing those layers like that. So now we're going to get a second piece of paper, and I'm going to show you one of the ways that you can keep it from buckling. All right, so we have a new piece of paper. We want to keep this from buckling. So one way to do that is to evenly spread the water that gets onto this first. You can do that by uh, watering down paint with water and then just um, paint it on. Nice even surface, you can use either that brush or a foam brush, either one works. Um, and I have done that before, but I find that uh, to take a little bit of time and um, it's just not the method that I like. What I like to do, especially for these 9 by, uh, nine by 12 pieces, is I just get a cake pan, fill it full of water, um, and I just dip my paper in, make sure it gets wet all the way around on that side, wet all the way around on that side, let that drip, and I put that on my paper, and now all of the paper is wet at the exact same time on both sides, it's going to stay flat. Um, the wet will also help the paint move off. So one very important thing about this is if you use this method, the paper will stick to the back of whatever you're doing. So you have to paint and then pull it off onto a surface that is not going to um, stick. I like to use uh, plastic drop cloths. The paint, once it's dry, it peels right off this. Uh, it works well. I've heard that it, uh, it can peel off of trash bags also, which is what this white is. Or a silicone mat. Those nice, slowly beefy silicone mats work great. Uh, but you've got to transfer it or else you're going to run into a problem, which I ran into before, where it's stuck to the bottom and then I ripped it. So here's a little piece where I ripped. Um, so that was a beautiful painting and I ruined it because I left it on here too long and it stuck. Um, it stuck to my rack. So I poured the water on. It's just sitting there and all I'm going to do is take my paint this case, we're going to do a straight pour. Same type of thing. We layered the colors um, without, with only one thing of white and a little bit of black at the bottom. But then I'm just going to do a straight pour. See how the water is kind of jumping out with a little bit of paint on the edges? I don't mind that one bit. It's going to get uh, pushed off anyways. And like I say, it'll help my paint. there. Get a little bit of my edges. I 
And then same thing. I'm just going to pull this around a little bit. Yes, it's a little bit more messy, but I let all this stuff dry anyways on the bottom of my canvas, so don't worry about that too much. You can use a paper towel on the top after you've done that. Um, I kind of like the little effects that water makes as it dribbles in. I'm not really digging the, the orange over here, so we're going to go back that way. Run it off. Slowly, I don't want I don't want to pull these nice edges that we've made over here, but and there you go. I'll give you the side view here. That hasn't lifted up at all. Nice and flat. Don't have to worry about that. Um, like I say, uh, I'm just going to transfer this right now to a. Um, I'm just going to pull it up here. Grab the paint off the sides, make sure my finger is underneath so it doesn't come back up onto the onto the canvas. Grab that paint, and then I'm just going to shift it, and perfect. I can uh, paint pour for the cost of the paint rather than paying a dollar or two for a painting surface. I can perfect what I want to do, then do it on the nicer surfaces. And... The other thing about this is you can actually take this, cut it into to long stripes, glue them together. Uh, those turn into um, bookmarks, or you can actually use this for jewelry also as long as it's not too thick. There's lots of other reasons to do this, but this is a great way to practice, a great way to save some money, and um, you, there's just so many other things you can do with a nice thin um, paint pouring that you just can't do with a thicker and heavier uh, painting surface. So when you've poured on paper, what problems have you had? What questions can we answer? Put them in the comments below and we will do that. Otherwise, if this is the type of content you want, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified in our weekly training videos. And we have occasionally other um, just inspiration videos during the week, but we will have one weekly training on different techniques, different how-tos, question and answer to help you, the pouring nation, get better at paint pouring.